Well, one of the natural ways to look stupid in the future is to make really concrete predictions in the present. Where does an extra 20% of performance matter? I'm pretty sure that there will be at least multiple large model providers. And I think that's good for the overall ecosystem in the industry. But we are going to have to be careful of this stuff. 100% certain of this is that within five years, there will be equivalent of a co-pilot for every profession. So I guess there's a related question, which is where does value in the industry aggregate? And a lot of people are wondering what proportion of the successes in the industry go to the platforms uh, like OpenAI or other APIs? Um, what goes to the application layer? And so it'd, it'd be interesting to hear your viewpoint in terms of like, what does this ecosystem look like in three to five years, both from the perspective of app versus platform, but also like what's the natural evolution path on the platform side? Um, well, one of the natural ways to look stupid in the future is to make really concrete predictions in the present. Um, so, you know, with that caveat and, and deep fear and hesitation. Uh, so I think that, I think there's fundamentally kind of two trends uh, that are going on. One trend is um, on the scale compute thing, which includes large language models. I don't think that will be the only application of scale compute. I think the scale compute and size of compute will be driving one trend of progress. And part of that trend of progress is where does, for example, an extra 20% of performance matter? So if you think, well, okay, a virtual doctor, well, extra 20% really does matter, right? You know, maybe lawyer, maybe engineer, maybe, you know, and they go, okay. So on that large scale, like, okay, like, well, yes, we're innovating and we've, we've accomplished so much more with this smaller model. Well, what if you do that smaller model now at scale on the things that really matter where that cost curve of, the, the large male being the large model being uh, super expensive is worth that either directly to what the large model folks are doing or as provisioning to startups and so forth. And then I think the other trend will be highly tuned, more compact scale compute, whether they're you know large language models, foundational models, other things. And maybe they'll be tuned with very specific data. Maybe they'll be tuned for a very specific thing within you know kind of an operational cost. You know, and I think you'll see progress and maybe some of those will be open sourced. I think we'll get into more of that later. Now, in terms of aggregation of where does, where is there interesting opportunities for building companies and where will the, uh, the kind of the projects turn into great companies in three to five years and how much of it will be, you know, the large language model or scale model providers and others. There's definitely a lot of uncertainty there. I'm pretty sure that there will be at least multiple uh, large model providers. Um, and I think that's good for the overall ecosystem in the industry. Um, and I think that they will also, in different ways, like open AI's real thing is beneficial AI is their top thing. And so they will, they don't have the thing to say, oh, come build on the open AI platform and then we're gonna go build that app. That they have like, like, negative interest in that, less than zero in doing that uh, kind of stuff. So that gives a lot of entrepreneurial freedom and ability to run an event, which is, I think is good, uh, plus the, the multiple. So I think that's good. And I think the other area is to say, you know, like these, even like a 50 billion parameter, 100 billion parameter model or a one exaflop model, you know, kind of trained the right way, you know, um, you know, there'll be a bunch of these things that'll be open source, that'll be good for developers, good for creativity and so forth. But we are going to have to be careful of this stuff, right? Because, um, you know, like, for example, I'm, I, I was skeptical about the early releases of stability because of, you know, uh, various forms of exploitive material or revenge porn or other kinds of things. You know, obviously misinformation within the ecosystem is one of the things we have to deal with. And, and we'll have to take responsibility for those kind of open models in various ways when you get these kind of superpowers. And so I think it's one of the things that it's important to... Um, uh, important also to track, but I think they will have a huge amount of generativity. And then, um, then I think it actually is kind of like the old school rules. Like, well, does your business have network effects? If your business has network effects, then kind of like whatever you're provisioning in either of these two threats, that'll be good. If you're integrated to a lot of enterprises, that integration is another form of persistence in business. If you have, um, you know, you kind of get a first to scale and you're, in that first to scale, all of blitz scaling, you're doing the aggregation of customers, the brand, the aggregation of talent, the aggregation of, of um, uh, capital and all the rest, that could be it. And so all those are those, those old rules still apply here. Now, the question of course is given so much interest and so much going on, 
figuring out how to do them exactly, well, that's very challenging. Um, but that challenging means is ultimately to the advantage of startups because in places where you can run experiments and you can run them without worrying about damaging your current brand or position or customers is one thing. And you can run the experiments really quickly and change. Um, you can uh, try things um, in terms of, well, maybe there is a, maybe there's a big market here. Maybe there's not, I can try it. Um, cause I, you know, cause different startups can go after different things. You can respond quickly. You can say, well, we, we tried this for two months and now we're doing something entirely different, uh, which is one of the things that large companies can't do. Um, I mean, literally, I don't think there's any large company that can do that. Uh, and so anyway, so that's where I think part of it is looking at now that being said to, to finish out an answer to your question. Um, I think that one of the things that uh, my partner, Sam Motometi at Greylock and I wrote in the fall because like 100% certain of this is that within five years, there will be equivalent of a co-pilot for every profession and define a profession as I process information and generate things that also have to do with information. Like a doctor generates prescriptions and diagnoses or like all of the graphic designers generate, you know, kind of graphic designs and blah. And I think there will be something for everything. And five years, I think is giving us generous time. Like, I think it will be sooner than that. And I think that is nearly certain. And that a range of impact and range of thing is part of why there is such amazing startup opportunity that even the current startups all going for it, look, they're going to pick some of them, not all of them.